Hi guys and welcome back to a new hands-on video by Mirror Lessons and today I'm here with the OMD M10 Mark II that has just been announced. It's the fifth OMD camera released by Olympus and actually it's the first OMD camera that doesn't bring any new substantial feature but uh, instead picks some of the best characteristics from the other OMD camera and mix them very well in a very compact size body. So I'm going to show you all the different improvements and what's new about this camera in comparison to the first EM10. The dimensions and the overall size of the camera is pretty similar to the original EM10, actually it's almost identical. Now, I already like the M10 when it comes to uh, ergonomics and the dials were already good but Olympus managed to really improve them. They are slightly smaller but chunkier, more thicker and they're actually very nice to use. Uh, so they're easy to find even when uh, composing through the EVF. They move the shooting mode dial as well on the right side with the other two dials. So basically all the three main dials can be easily accessible with the right hand and uh, the same fingers. On the top left, they uh, move the on-off switch, and actually it's a new uh, on-off switch design, and you can also use it to activate the pop-up flash. There's also an extra space here, and there's an additional function button in comparison to the uh, first EM10. The EVF is, an update, is updated as well, you have more resolution, and it's slightly larger as well, you have a slightly larger magnification factor. So it's very nice to use, bright, uh, the refresh rate is very good as well, even in low light, so it's a very good EVF. It's not as large as the one found in the M1 or the M5 Mark II, but still a very good viewfinder. Other updates include a larger and slightly more prominent thumb rise here on the rear. I would say overall the M10 Mark II has a slightly better grip in comparison to the original M10, but still if you want the better grip with this camera, you're gonna need the optional landscape grip that is sold separately. Actually, there's one thing to know about this grip here. Uh, it's a new version. Uh, it's called actually the ECG3 and it won't work on the original EM10. Uh, I think the difference is just a few millimeters, but uh, again, that's enough to make this uh, new grip not compatible with the previous camera and vice versa the ECG1 won't be compatible with the EM10 Mark II. Otherwise, it's a nice grip and you can easily mounted on the camera and it also has a quick release mechanism so uh, you can change the battery without mounting the grip. Uh, the overall button layout on the rear is basically the same, uh, they improved a little bit the design of the arrow pad but that's about it. The LCD screen as well is the same, it can be tilted up and down. There are some touch sensitive capabilities, you can uh, choose your focus point with your finger, you can also take a picture by touching the screen. Uh, and Olympus also implemented a new feature that uh, is already found on some Panasonic cameras. Uh, basically, when I'm composing with DVF, I can activate a mode called IF targeting pad, and it will keep the touch sensitive surface of the screen activated even when I'm using DVF. And so I can simply change my focus point by touching the screen, the LCD screen, while composing with DVF. I think Panasonic introduced that feature uh, with the GX7 first. There are two flaws in my opinion. The first one is uh, sometimes the touch sensitive it doesn't react uh, fast enough or also is not precise enough and you have to actually move your finger quite a lot on the screen to finally get the focus point exactly where you want. Also I often touch the screen with my nose when composing with EVF and as a result I'm gonna inadvertently change my focus point where I don't want to. However, here Olympus made a clever option. You can actually double tap the LCD screen to activate or deactivate this uh, targeting pad feature. So that it's a quick way of deactivating when your nose gets in the way too much. The body is an all metal body, but it's not weather sealed. So not, no dust, no splash resistance. Another thing, uh, if you remember the original EM10 had a very tight mount um, when 
you were unmounting and mounting some lens that you had to turn really hard to lock the lens. The M10 Mark II is better in that way. Uh, you can unmount and mount lenses easier without having to turn very hard to uh, lock the lens. So let's talk about what's inside. From ImageQuiet's point of view, there's no surprises. It's the same 16 megapixel micro four fold sensor found also in the M10 and the M5 Mark II. So same quality as basically all the other OMD cameras. No surprise here at all. What Olympus improved in comparison to the M10 is the sensor stabilization. The M10 Mark II now has five axis stabilization. Uh, the first M10 had three axis only. It wasn't bad, it proved to be uh, good up to, uh, let's say, one fifth or one sixth of a second handheld. But however, it felt a little bit like a limitation because it was an entry level camera. Uh, what now, the five axis stabilization is by far, in my opinion, the best feature you can find on Olympus cameras. And I think it's a good idea to bring the five axis option also on an entry level camera like this. It basically, it means that all OMD cameras keep the same high quality standard when it comes to image stabilization. The five axis system inside the, M5, in the M10 Mark II, sorry, it's actually the same found in the EM1. So it's not the latest generation. The M5 Mark II actually is slightly better. Still, with this camera, you can take handheld shots down to half of a second, or if you're good, even one second. I actually managed to take a few shots with the 25 millimeter, which is a very lightweight and fast prime lens. Uh, and even without the additional grip, uh, if you're good enough and you use DVF to be very stable, you can take handheld shots at a very slow shadow speed. The autofocus is excellent as well. So it has the exact same autofocus as the M5 Mark II. We actually used the camera at the recent Race the Train Marathon in Wales, and it performed really well, both with continuous OF, with tracking. Uh, we used mainly the 75 mm 1.8, and it does really a good job. In low light, it's slightly slower. Sometimes it can suffer from specular highlights in the background, but otherwise it's a very good performance. If you use the electronic shutter, you can actually have even fast burst, 11 frames per second in single F and 5 frames per second in continuous F. However, be aware of rolling shutter issues that is common with every electronic shutter. Electronic shutter means also a uh, silent mode and it's actually very, very silent. and you can also shoot up to 160,000 of a second with the electronic shutter. Video capabilities. Uh, the M10 Mark II inherits yet another characteristic from the M5 Mark II, which is the video capabilities. So you can shoot full HD up to 60 frames per second. You have actually lots of frame rates to choose from. So 60, 50, 30, 24, 25. No 4K capabilities, unfortunately. There's actually a 4K option, but it's related to the time-lapse. Uh, as you know, with the OMD cameras, you have a time-lapse option and you can also choose to save all the stills in a movie file. Up until the M10 Mark II, it was 720p only in motion JPEG. With the M10 Mark II, you can save the file in Full HD and in 4K. Now, there is a limit, however. In 4K, the video file is only 5 frames per second. It's a very low frame rate, and there's actually less fluidity uh, in the transition between the different stills. So, it's a nice idea to implement 4K for time-lapse, but I wish they could have a faster frame rate. So overall, the video quality of the, this camera is good, like the M5 Mark II, but you still have some worry and aliasing issues that sometimes can be annoying depending on the specific scene you are shooting. So it's good, but it's not as good as, let's say, some Panasonic cameras or even Sony cameras. You also have a 100 20 frames per second slow motion option, but unfortunately it's not Full HD, it's not even HD ready, actually it's uh, 640 by 480, uh, so it's standard definition, there's a lot of uh, pixel and aliasing in there. However, there's one thing that Olympus does right with the video as well, and like for still, again, it's the 5-axis stabilization. Uh, the M10 Mark II uses 5-axis for movie recording as well, and is actually very good. 
uh, you almost get steady cam look-alike shots. Like the Infarmac 2, it's really, really good. If you use telephoto lenses, uh, we even took some macro shots with the 60mm macro, and you know, it does really a good job. Uh, you have two options, the MIS-1 and MIS-2. The first will use sensor and software stabilization we, and can produce some jello effects. I prefer the second option, the MIS-2, because it only uses the sensor stabilization, so only the physical stabilization. It's really good. The only thing to be aware of, if you watch our uh, video about the M4M2 and the 5-axis stabilization for video, I showed you that sometimes you can have some uh, what I called uh, sudden sideways shifts. Uh, when you're panning left or right, sometimes the camera overcompensate uh, the shaking and produce something that looks in the video like a, a very fast sideways shift. So it's, uh, it doesn't happen all the time and it's based on how fast you are panning, how steady you can be with your hands, but it's something to be aware of. Uh, so that's the only little downside about the uh, stabilization for video, but otherwise very very nice result And if you're shooting in the street or the very busy street with lots of people you can really really get very nice shots without tripod So again, I've, probably the best thing about this camera and OMD camera is the 5 axis stabilization for stills but also video There's not much left to add. Uh, I mean the M10 Mark II has many of the extra features that all the other OMD cameras have. So you have live composite and lifetime for long exposure, star trail, firework shots and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you have uh, bracketing option, H HDR options, multiple exposure, uh, Wi-Fi capabilities so you can use your smartphone or your iPad to remote control the camera, transfer images and all these kind of things you can find on many uh, Olympus, Panasonic and actually all mirrorless cameras right now. So overall, I must say uh, it's a very nice camera. I mean, uh, it has a lot of nice feature in a very compact and lightweight body. That being said, I must say that uh, the M10, the original M10, it won't be discontinued yet. Actually, I think it's gonna become an even less expensive entry-level camera. Uh, and I think that's not a bad idea. Uh, the original M10 is a very, very good camera. And you don't get the 5 axis stabilization, you get less advanced video functionalities, but the image quality is the same, the autofocus is basically the same, so if you want an even cheaper camera, the M10 is still a very good choice. So, I guess that's it for this hands-on video about the new Olympus OMD M10 Mark II. If you have any question, as usual, leave a comment in this very YouTube video. You can also check out our full review of the camera on mirrorlesson.com. And thank you for watching, please share the video and see you soon. Bye-bye.